Yeah. Oh, there you are! Where have you been? I've been worried sick about you. <laughs> How you guys doing? Um, a lot has been going on and we have a lot to show you. Uh, a lot of progress in many areas. The uh, tool chest is finished. That is the box portion of the tool chest is done. It has a uh, Danish oil finish on it, but we still have to make the trays that go inside. So that's a whole nother show. I'm just going to show you the box. We're going to talk about it a little bit, but then we're going to move on and do some other things and come back to that. And like I said, a whole nother show just on the trays. Another project came along and it's called a stackable wine rack. So I'm going to show you that. And then we're going to get to the hit of the show. And that is Jonine's workbench. It's finished. The base is done. The top is completed. We put the last coat of finish on the surface last night. And we're going to assemble it right here on the show for you. So you're going to see the wonderful bench that <laughs> Jonine has. So that's that. Um, this, is, by the way, is one of the stretchers I think I told you I was going to make for the uh, leg assemblies. And we'll get around to that. So anyway. Let's have a look at the tool chest. And here it is. Looks pretty much like it did the last time, but it has a coat of Danish oil on it here, which really brings out a nice color to it. And also the end grain on the dovetails really darkens up, so you get a lot of nice contrast there. It looks really cool, I think. Nice smooth finish on the outside. The inside is finished as well, and what we're going to be doing is making trays that fit inside the top. And this is a little mock-up that I made out of foam core, more like a mockery, wouldn't you say? But it's a tool tray mock-up, and it goes in like this, and it can slide back and forth, and there'll be another one just like it that fits underneath it, and that will slide back as well. So you can have access to your tools in the trays, you can slide them back and forth, or you can lift them out of the way and have access to the things inside your box. So uh, these will be made out of quarter inch wood, solid wood bottoms, and they will be tiny little dovetails joining the corners. So uh, they're going to be a lot of fun to make and a lot of work. So uh, we'll get around to that. So um, that is our tool chest. Now, the next thing. Uh, on weekends and some weekdays, I work in a store that sells woodworking tools and supplies. And on Saturday mornings, I like to have a project going on so that when customers come in, they can sit and see the progress and sip their coffee and tell me what I did wrong and so forth. So uh, that is a, uh, it's called a stackable wine rack. We sell the plans at the store, so I picked them out and decided to build them, uh, the wine rack, and uh, the, the customers get to watch me do that. Uh, I've got some shots now of me putting that together and also assembling it and so forth, so we're going to go to a cutaway now and you can see that. So that's what it is. I'll give you the 3D look. Here it is. Isn't that amazing? And uh, I even got a, a bottle here. We have lots of these laying around. Uh, there we go. There's the champagne bottle. It holds it so that the bubble goes to the back. <clears throat> Let's have a look at the finished product. I have it right here. Here it is. The wine rack. It's been stained, finished, and on the ends here, I'm using milk paint. Real milk paint. It's really neat stuff. It has a unique look. It's a special look to it. It's the oldest paint known to man. It's made from milk, really has milk in it, milk, lime, and a pigment of some kind. 
Uh, and when it uh, dries, it really plasters itself onto the wood. It's extremely durable, extremely color fast. So I thought it would be fun to, to work with this and use it. And uh, you can buy it easily in a lot of the stores. comes in a bag usually like this in powder form. Um, and it looks like this. It's a blue powder. In this case, blue. It comes in all colors. And you mix it with an equal quantity of water. You stir it up. And in 15 minutes, you have paint. It's water-based. It's non-toxic. And when you put it on your project, here's a sample. This is the first coat. It's kind of a wash coat. You can see the wood through it. it dries in about an hour. Here's your second coat. And that looks really nice. That's a solid color there. It's got nice streaks to it. And it's dead flat. Now you can use it just like that, or you can put a varnish or an oil finish on top. It's compatible with that. And I don't know if you can see it here. I'm trying to get a sheen to appear. Can you see it? Is that working? Mm -hmm. um, so that deepens the color, and also it's more of a washable finish. So uh, a lot of people can do that, would like to do that. You can also put one color as a first coat, a second top coat, and then as the top coat wears through from daily use, you get kind of a neat look where the first coat shows through in certain areas. So that's another neat thing you can do. Now this stuff, they used to think, was about five or 6,000 years old because they saw it in the Egyptian tombs. But they've recently discovered in France cave paintings that go back 20 to 25,000 years are milk paint. So it's prehistoric paint. Even Neanderthals were having fun with milk paint and using it in their uh, little craft projects as well. So um, get in touch with your inner caveman and uh, have some fun with, uh, with your milk paint. It's pretty neat stuff. Um, by the way, if you go to the store and you see the stuff that comes in a can, it's called milk paint, they're lying to you. It's not milk paint. It's actually uh, exterior acrylic. It doesn't look like milk paint. It doesn't have any milk in it. It's, it's not going to be what you want. But they call it milk, milk paint anyway. I'm not sure why, but get this stuff. It's the real deal. Let's get to the, the really cool thing about this show. The tool chest. This... <laughs> keep it going. Okay. <laughs> keep going. Okay. <laughs> that would be the workbench. Um, this is one of the stretchers. Let me get the other parts. Hang on. Don't go anywhere. This is the other stretcher that joins the leg assemblies. Here's one leg assembly. Don't fall. Mm -hmm. And here's the other one. And what we're going to do is we're going to assemble this and then we're going to put the top on. So we're going to be dissolving in and out and you'll get to see the whole thing. So, here we go. Now these bolts go through like that. Is it all together? Okay, here we are. It's assembled. It's a workbench on top of a workbench. This is uh, in the same style as the one below it, here. Now, these stretchers, 
You might be thinking that these are a little bit overkill, but you would be wrong. It's very important that they be this big and massive because they really prevent racking. A lot of tables you would normally have an apron that goes around here and provides support for the table. But I want that slab, the top, to have nothing that gets in the way of my clamps. So all the support has to occur here. So with these massive shoulders on these tenons and mortises and these bolts that go through, providing a tremendous amount of force to clamp it together, this will not rack. It won't go like that. So it's rock steady and it's just like the one below it. It doesn't move. It's not going to rock. So it's a good solid work surface. So what we're going to do now is we're going to move this onto the floor and, uh, and then we're going to come back and talk about the top. All right, it has been moved right here. It's all ready for the top. Let me just tell you a little bit about the top. Um, remember the last time it was laminated up, but it needed to be drum sanded flat, just like this top here. So I took it, I was going to go back to the place that did this top, and when I talked to them, they said they don't do that anymore. Uh, they closed down their shop and they wouldn't do it. So um, I went all over the place trying to find somebody that could drum sand this top nice and flat and was striking out all over the place. So the last place that I went to uh, does architectural millwork for big institutions, big, big companies and retail outlets and stuff like that. And um, I was sure this was not going to work out, but I went in the door anyway. It turns out I went in the wrong door walked into their corporate offices where visitors aren't allowed and I'm wandering the halls trying to find my way to the front uh, and a guy comes down the hall and says can I help you and it turns out it was the CEO and president of this company so um, I said I'm sorry I you know I, I came in the wrong door I'm just trying to find my way to the front and he said well um, what are you here for and I said, well, I'm making a workbench and I need someone to help me mill the top down. And I showed him a couple snapshots. Here's a snapshot of, the, uh, of this workbench. And here's a snapshot of the top that I wanted to have work done on. So he looked at the photographs and he said, well, that's really neat. You, you made that workbench? And I said, yeah. He said, well, heck, I can do that. So he gave me his card said, come on by next week, give me a call first, and I'll take care of it personally for you. So that's what we did. We dragged the top to his place, uh, and he unleashed his, uh, his workers there, and they milled the top flat. They cut the ends smooth. It came out looking beautifully. So uh, he didn't want any money for it. I managed to stuff a few 20s in his hand, and I told him to buy beer for the crew. So a hearty cheer went up in the shop, <laughs> and uh, I went on my way. So the top looks great, and I'm going to get it now. Janine's going to help me. So here we go. Okay, now you're on your own here. Janine's on the other end of the workbench. You're sitting on a little tripod directly on the workbench. So we're going to pick you up and move you onto the bench. Be careful. Don't fall. Keep your balance if you can. Here we go. Watch your step. Okay. Okay. Set her down. Like this. Okay. There we are. It's in place. And the bench is completed. That's what it looks like. Rock solid. Turned out better than I had hoped. The wood grain is beautiful. I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's beautiful, it has nice beautiful knots and a great feel to it. It's got several coats of Danish oil on it and in about two or three weeks when this cures, we're going to put a coat of paste wax on it so glue and paint and stuff don't stick to it. So um, it's uh, rock solid and uh, we're going to be, uh, we're going to be fastening the top with great big screws like this, they're going to attach the leg, the base, to the top. So um, once, that done, once that's done, it will be completed. Now, we're going to try to talk Jonine 
into giving us a tour of her workshop with this workbench in place. Uh, I'm going to get behind the camera and she's going to be in front of the camera. She's shaking her head no, but she's going to do it, I think. And she's going to give us a tour of her workshop and it'll be kind of fun. I'll be the cameraman and she will be the on-camera person. So uh, that's next time, I think, uh, or the time after. So um, that's our show. The stupid music, I'm sure, is in full force at this point. So um, catch you guys next time.